gold, price, uh, gold prices have set a record levels on account of the weakening of the dollar. On the other hand, the slowdown in growth and the anticipated resolution of the political stalemate in Libya have contributed to a downward trend in crude oil prices. On the domestic front, information from the Ghana Statistical Service shows that overall inflation declined from 9.2% in February to 8.6% in June and further down to 8.4% in July. The deceleration in headline inflation is largely attributed to continued reduction in food inflation, which reached 3.3% in July, down from 4.5% recorded in December 2010. Non-food inflation, on the other hand, has gone up slightly from 11.2% recorded at the end of December 2010 to 11.8% at the end of July. The core measure of inflation used by the Bank of Ghana to monitor underlying inflation pressures in the economy, that is the core inflation is defined to exclude the volatile factors, energy and utility from the CPI basket. The core measure exited signs of stability. The rate declined from 8% at the end of December 2010 to 7.8% at the end of July this year. Results of our recent survey on inflation expectations show that consumers and financial institutions are optimistic that inflation would remain within single digits by the end of this year. Estimates of the Real Composite Index of Economic Activity, RCIEA, for the first half of 2011 show that the level of economic activity increased on a year-on-year -year basis by 20.5% compared to 19.4% in May. All the components of the CIEA that is port activity, net contribution, merchandise exports and imports, sales of key manufacturing establishments, bank credit, and domestic value-added tax collection contributed to the increase in that we observed. The consumer survey also showed a generally positive assessment of macroeconomic conditions and prospects. The consumer confidence index increased to 102.1% sorry 102.1 in August from 99.5 in June. The monetary and banking sector development. Broad money supply, including foreign currency deposits, what we call the M2 plus, increased between December 2010 and July 2011. It expanded by 12.4% to 15.4 billion Ghana cities at the end of July. On a year-on-year -year basis, M2 Plus grew by 42.6% in July, up from 40.2% in June this year. The banking sector continued to be sound, with most banks well capitalized. Although the capital adequacy ratio declined from 19.9% in June to 17.5% 17 17 at the end of, uh, sorry, sorry, let me take that again. And so although the capital adequacy ratio this year declined from 19.9% in June 2010 to 17.5% at the end of June 2011, it remained well above the statutory threshold of 10%. The asset quality of the banking system showed improvement at the non-performing loan ratio, that is the proportion of non-performing loans to total loans, declined from 17.2% in May 2011 to 16.4% at the end of June. Liquidity levels also remain above the regulatory requirement. Stress tests conducted on the banks by Bank of Ghana indicated that the banking sector was resilient to adverse changes in interest rates, exchange rates, and credit quality. It also showed that liquidity levels were sufficient to cushion the system against extreme liquidity risk. The Credit Condition Survey conducted in July 2011 indicates continued easing of banks' credit stance for both enterprises and households. 
net overall demand for credit by enterprises declined, but enterprise demand for long-term loans increased. The stance on credit for mortgages and consumer spending by commercial banks is underscored by commercial banks' favorable expectations of general economic activity. I move on now to government fiscal operations. Among the recent fiscal developments that were considered by the committee in its deliberations were the approval by Parliament of the supplementary budget, the announcement of a 20% increase in public sector wages taking effect from January this year, and the announcement of increases in electricity and water tariffs. Provincial Bank of Ghana data on the execution of the budget shows that the total revenue target for the, for the period January to July was achieved. However, the pace of growth in expenditure was higher than program. Total revenue and grants realized in the first seven months of this year amounted to 5.8 billion Ghana cities, compared to a target of 5.7 billion Ghana cities. International trade taxes comprising import duty, import tax, petroleum taxes, and import NHIL total 1.9 billion dollars, exceeding the target by 7.7%. Income and property taxes amounted to 1.9 billion Ghana cities, falling short of the expected target by 12.4%. Indirect domestic taxes made up of domestic VAT, excise duty, the communication service tax, and NHIL amounted to 679.2 million dollars cities, 5.9% below its target. Non-tax revenue amounted to 458.8 million Ghana cities, representing 69.6% of budgeted targets. Grants amounted to 260.4 million Ghana cities, representing 75.8% of the budgeted target. The other receipts that amounted to 556.5 five, million Ghana cities. Total expenditure, excluding foreign finance capital expenditure, amounted to 6.9 billion Ghana cities for the first seven months of the year. Wages and salaries and related expenditures came to 2.6 million Ghana, 2.6 billion Ghana, absorbing 46.5 percent of domestic revenue. Overall fiscal operations from January to July 2011, therefore, resulted in a narrow budget deficit of 1.12 billion Ghana, compared with a target deficit of 849.8 million Ghana. The deficit was financed by net domestic borrowing of 1.04 billion Ghana cities and net foreign inflows of 84.3 million Ghana cities. The net domestic financing represented 92.7% of the budgeted target for the period. The stock of domestic debt at the end of July was 10.9 billion Ghana cities an increase from the 8.3 billion cities that was observed in December 2010. The external debt stock increased from 6.3 billion US dollars at the end of December to 7.1 billion US dollars at the end of July 2011. The total public debt at the end of July was therefore 21.6 billion Ghana cities, equivalent to 40.5% of GDP, an increase from the 38.1% of GDP at the end of December 2010. With respect to interest rates, interest rates on the money market continue, continue to ease over the seven month period, with a shift in investor preference towards long dated instruments. The 91-day Treasury bill rate declined from 12.28% to 10.31% in the period, while the 182-day Treasury bill rate declined from 12.68 to 
2.2% during the period. The rate on the one-year note fell from 12.65% to 11.8%, while the rate on the two-year note declined from 12.7% to 11.96%. The overnight interbank weighted average rate, the rate at which commercial banks borrow from each other, declined by 27 basis points to 11.38% between January and July. Commercial bank lending rates also declined in the period under review. The average base rate quotations of the banks fell by 2.21% to 23.58%, while average lending rates were lower by 68 basis points to 26.95%. The average three-month time deposit rate of commercial banks fell by 1.6% to 8.9% during the period. Similarly, the average savings deposit rate declined by 1.5% to 4.4%. Respect to the external sector, balance of trade data shows that the deficit of 1.3 billion US dollars for the first seven months of 2010 reduced to a provisional deficit of 1.1 billion for the corresponding period of 2011. Total merchandise exports increased by 2.9 billion to 7.5 billion dollars in 2011, representing a growth of 62.3 percent over the period of 2010. The strong export growth was driven by gold, cocoa beans, and crude oil. The total export of crude oil from January to July was 12.6 million barrels, valued at 1.4 billion US dollars, while exports of gold and cocoa beans were 2.8 billion US dollars and 1.5 billion US dollars respectively. Total merchandise imports from January to July amounted to 8.6 billion US dollars, <coughs> representing an annual growth of 45.4%. Crude oil imports increased by $229 million to a total of $825 million, while imports of product oil products increased by $180.9 million to $805.8 million US dollars. In addition, there were imports of gas through the West African gas pipeline of about 95 million US dollars. Total non-oil imports classified according to the basic economic classification or by end use show that the value of consumer goods increased by 617.5 million US dollars to 1.7 billion US dollars. Intermediate imports amounted to 3.4 billion US dollars, while capital goods were at 1.4 billion US dollars. Private inward transfers through the banks from January to July amounted to 9.97 billion US dollars, out of which 1.13 billion US dollars, or 11.3% of the total, accrued to individuals. The total transfers represent an annual growth of 53.4% over the $6.5 billion transferred during the period, the corresponding period, in 2010. Total purchases of foreign exchange by deposit money banks and foreign bureau amounted to $5.97 billion US dollars between January and July. Sales of foreign exchange during the period were $5.89 billion. Therefore, total transactions at both purchases and on the foreign exchange market amounted to $11.86 billion at the end of July, compared with $7.93 billion over the same period in 2010. The city depreciated by 2.2% against the US dollar in nominal terms from the beginning of the year to July, compared with a marginal 